Welcome to Property Questions and Answers. In this series, we ask our existing customers to look into one particular aspect of property investment and ask questions that a new buyer may ask. In return, I will answer those questions in the context of our own products and services. As our customers are all over the world, including different regions of the UK, we normally do this over a Zoom video call. At the end, I also chat informally with investors and ask simple questions about themselves and their investment. Today, the questions are all about location. Should investors buy their property in the north of England or the south? For this video, we're going to connect with Tony and Jeanette daily, who are existing clients living in Spain and have purchased three properties from us over the past seven to eight years. They're both UK nationals, and like many of our expat clients, have decided to live in the south of Europe after retirement. Hi, Tony. If you turn the phone the other way, I can also see Jeanette. I'll try horizontal, right? Yeah. And you're even bigger, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> How are you keeping? We're, we're okay, I mean, we're, yeah. Yeah, we're Put, a bit hot. Putting up with putting up with lovely weather and all that. It's not it's not the worst thing. <laughs> Whereabouts are you in Spain? We live on the in Spain on the Costa Blanca area, sort of halfway between Alicante and Valencia. Um, and we came here all oh, over twenty years ago now. And now we've got two boys, um, and they were thirteen and ten at the time. But uh, they were able to uh, go to school here. Uh, but in the end, they've, they've ended up going to university in England and living back in England as well. I guess we needed um, some kind of pension, um, which we haven't really got. And uh, um, so we were looking for something else and saw Find UK with these much cheaper houses up north. and that seemed to be something that we could get involved with. Thanks for agreeing to ask the questions on this video. Let's go ahead through your list of questions. Perhaps each of you can ask a question in turn. What things should investors consider before deciding to buy an investment property in the north or south of England? Thanks. So the things that investors should consider before deciding whether to buy investment property in the north or in the south of England are the same things they would consider for any investment property purchase. The main one is investment return. And this consists of two main factors, the percentage rental yield and the percentage capital growth in value over time. For a good investment, these added together should give a return of over 10%. We can cover these in detail later and look at the differences between the North and the South. The other factors include affordability, risk, and flexibility, which we can talk about now. Now, properties in the North are on average four times cheaper than the South, so they are affordable even without a mortgage. This also means that for the same budget, for example, £300,000, investors could buy four properties in the north instead of one in the south. So this reduces risks, so all the eggs are not in one basket. If there is a problem with one tenant, or if one property is vacant, or in need of repair, it doesn't affect the others, and the investor still continues to get income. Your risk is also lower with low cost properties, should there be a recession. Lower cost properties, which are already at rock bottom prices, are likely to fall less than more expensive properties, as there's always demand at the lower end of the market. And such demand actually increases in a recession when everyone is cost cutting and looking for smaller properties to buy or rent. Properties in the north also give you more flexibility because they are cheaper. For example, you could purchase in stages like you did, investing a smaller amount each time. 
many of our clients buy one low cost property in the beginning and then continue savings to buy another a few years later. And there's also flexibility in that you can sell one property and keep the others if you need any money in an emergency in the future. Is rental demand and rents not higher in the South? So is rental demand in the South higher? Yes, rental demand is indeed strong and rents per property are much higher in the South than the North. Average investment property in the South may give double the gross rent of around £12,000 per year compared with a gross rent of just £6,000 per year for a similar property in the north. So rents per property are double. However, at 300,000 pounds average price for a property in the south, this is four times higher when compared to an average price of a property in the north, which is around 75,000 pounds. So when you compare the rent to price, I mean, £12,000 rent out of £300,000 investment, then the gross yield is just 4% in the South, compared to £6,000 out of £75,000, which is a yield of 8% in the North. Now, with a budget of £300,000, you could buy four houses in the North, compared with just one in the South. So your total rent for the four houses together in the north is 24,000 pounds. So actually, properties in the north give better rent, almost double the rent for the same budget. This is contrary to what most people may think. I always thought that capital growth in value was higher in the south, is that true? Well, Jeanette, uh, yes. Many clients think that capital growth is higher in the South, as do many industry experts, but it isn't true. Yes, capital growth per property is four times higher because on average investment properties are four times more expensive. But percentage capital growth is actually the same in the South and the North. Although growth may happen in spurs, on average, the long-term capital growth rates on houses in all areas of the UK and at all price points are remarkably similar. This chart of the UK shows the average annual house growth over the past 70 years. On average, houses have doubled in value every 10 to 12 years, and the average annual increase has been around 7% in almost all areas of the UK. Even 50 years ago, houses in the South were over four times more expensive than houses in the North. And this is still true today. So over the very long term, the average capital growth in both areas have in fact been very similar, around 7% growth per year. Over the short term, however, there can be differences in growth rates. And our view is that the percentage capital growth in the next 10 years is likely to be higher in the North than the South. Post COVID, the economy has changed, allowing many people to work from anywhere. The Northern towns were depressed in the past, but are now booming economically with falling unemployment, increasing population and rising housing demand. And investors are switching from South to North and prices here are on average likely to grow at a higher rate than the South in the next 10 years. Thanks for asking the questions, Tony and Jeanette. I will summarize. When comparing properties in the North of England with the South, the percentage rental yields are better in the North. The percentage capital growth over the long term is similar, but growth in the next 10 years may be better in the North for the reasons I mentioned. And because properties in the north are cheaper, they are more affordable, have lower risk, and provide more flexibility. Thanks for that. 
We have a lot of UK expats living in Spain who have purchased investment properties from us. What is the attraction of Spain? Is it just the weather? It's a big, big intra- attraction is the, the weather, uh, but also the more relaxed way of life here. Um, cost of living, the cost of living, especially is- now, you know, it, it has it has increased here, but compared to Britain, it's not not the same kind of levels. Your money goes does go further here. Um, yes, um, and, and it's not we're not so far away from Britain either. You know, we can still drive or we can fly. We've got those options. It's not not like being in Australia or something like that. As you know, our investment system is a hundred percent passive, so you don't need to visit the UK. But how often do you visit the UK? And until the pandemic, we would probably go back and forth three or four times a year, yeah. something like that. Yeah, always at Christmas. Um, I mean, the big thing that we do miss being in Spain is being closer to our children and our family and friends there. Uh, but we hope to be able to travel back regularly to be able to see them and, and more sort of concentrated time in other way. What about the health service in Spain? Is it any good? Yes, it's supposed to be. Well, it's, it's very good. It's pretty highly rated, I think. Yeah. yeah, all the times we've had to um, uh, take advantage of it or whatever, we've, we've been very happy and friends and other people have always been pretty happy with it. Has it been a good decision to invest passively in property in the UK and get income which you can then spend whilst retired in Spain? Probably hundred yeah. percent. We wouldn't be able to afford things that we can here. Um, I mean, start off with a, a much bigger house and, and a pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's not so many houses with pools in Burnley, I don't think. <laughs> Thanks very much for doing this video. We'll send you the final version for your approval and consent. Thanks very much. Bye. Thanks very much, Terry. I will just add that if viewers want to learn more about passive investment in low cost properties in the UK, then please watch our main video shown here, which is divided into four sections that cover everything you need to know. Or you can watch one of the five videos produced by the BBC that show how we acquire, renovate and sell low cost properties, such as the one featured here. Thank you.